The 1858 Bradford Sweets poisoning was the arsenic poisoning of more than 200 people in Bradford, England, when sweets accidentally made with arsenic were sold from a market stall. Twenty-one victims died as a result. The event contributed to the passage of the Pharmacy Act 1868 in the United Kingdom and legislation regulating the adulteration of foodstuffs. Background William Hardiker, known to locals as Humbug Billy, sold sweets from a stall in the Green Market in central Bradford, now the site of Bradford's Arndale Centre. Hardiker purchased his supplies from Joseph Neal, who made the sweets or lozenges on Stone Street a few hundred yards to the north. The lozenges in question were peppermint humbugs, made of peppermint oil incorporated into a base of sugar and gum. However, sugar was expensive, six and a half d per one pound, 0.45 kilograms, and so Neil would substitute powdered gypsum, one half d per one pound, 0.45 kilograms, known as DAF, for some of the required sugar. The adulteration of foodstuffs with cheaper substances was common at the time, and the adulterators used obscure nicknames: DAF, Multum, Flash, Stuff, to hide the practice. Accidental poisoning On the occasion in question, Neil sent James Archer, a lodger who lived at his house, to collect daff for Hardiker's humbugs from druggist Charles Hodgson. Hodgson's pharmacy was three miles kilometers away at Bailden Bridge in Shipley. Hodgson was at his pharmacy, but did not serve Archer owing to illness and so his requests were seen to by his young assistant, William Goddard. Goddard asked Hodgson where the daff was, and was told that it was in a cask in a corner of the attic. However, rather than daff, Goddard sold Archer 12 pounds kilograms of arsenic trioxide. The mistake remained undetected even during manufacture of the sweets by James Appleton, an experienced sweetmaker, employed by Neil, though Appleton did observe that the finished product looked different from the usual humbugs. Appleton was suffering symptoms of illness during the sweet making process and was ill for several days afterwards with vomiting and pain in his hands and arms, but did not realize it was caused by poison. Forty pounds 18 kilograms of lozenges were sold to Hardiker who also noticed the sweets looked unusual and used this to obtain a discount from Neil. Like Appleton, Hardiker, as one of the first to taste the sweets, also promptly became ill. Regardless, Hardiker sold 5 pounds kilograms of the sweets from his market stall that night, reportedly at a price of 1.5 d for 2 ounces 57 grams. Of those who purchased and ate the sweets, 21 people died with a further 200 or so becoming severely ill with arsenic poisoning within a day or so. Topic. Consequences. Originally the first deaths—those of two children—were thought to be owing to cholera, a major problem in Britain at the time, but the growing number of casualties soon showed that the purchase of lozenges from Hardiker's stall was the cause, and from there the trail led to Neil and Hodgson. Goddard was arrested and stood before magistrates in the courthouse in Bradford on 1 November with Hodgson and Neil later committed for trial with Goddard on a charge of manslaughter. Dr. John Bell identified arsenic as the cause, and this was confirmed by Felix Remington, a prominent chemist and druggist and analytical chemist. Remington estimated that each humbug contained between 14 and 15 grains 910 and 970 milligrams of arsenic, though a contemporary account suggests 9 grains 580 milligrams, with 4.5 grains 290 milligrams being a lethal dose. As such, each lozenge would have contained enough arsenic to kill two people, and enough distributed by Hardiker in total to kill 2,000. The prosecution against Goddard and Neal was later withdrawn and Hodgson was acquitted when the case was considered at York Assizes on 21 December 1858. The tragedy and resulting public outcry was a major contributing factor to the Pharmacy Act 1868 which recognized the chemist and druggist as the custodian and seller of named poisons as medicine was then formally known. The requirement for record keeping and the requirement to obtain the signature of the purchaser is currently upheld under the Poisons Act 1972 for non-medicinal poisons. W.E. 
Gladstone's Ministry of 1868–1874 also brought in legislation regulating the adulteration of foodstuffs as a result of the events. 